Hello, Mr. Andy here. Uh, into week eight in SolidWorks, back into 3D modeling. Um, and uh, we have our usual collection of six models this week. Uh, so let's begin uh, with 8-1 here. I'd like to point out a few things in the assignment before we look at it in SolidWorks. Um, so a uh, fairly simple base feature. Uh, we're going to do that as just a big rectangle and then a rectangular solid. And then we're going to whittle it down. So we have a, a radial cut here to take care of. And we've got a couple of corners here that are uh, kind of oblique planes that uh, we're going to have to deal with. That's going to be something new for us. And then we have a linear pattern here of uh, these combs uh, and a pair of holes. And there's a couple unique things about these. I want you to be very careful. Um, you're going to have to create the, the uh, curved piece first, the spline curve piece, uh, using these dimensions. The holes use the same dimensions, so they're actually lined up, uh, if you will, vertically with the two endpoints of that S-curve. And they're lined up horizontally with the definition point there and there on that S-curve. So we want to be able to cut the holes and reference the sketch. And I want to show you how to do that. That's something we haven't done yet. And then the linear pattern, you'll notice that it slopes. Well, I don't, I don't want to do like some weird cut uh, to make that happen. So uh, we're going to uh, do an up to surface uh, extrude for that piece and, uh, and make this happen in a, in a different way than you might think. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, I have the part here, <clears throat> and you can see I've, I've created uh, this sketch. We'll come back to that in just a minute. The first thing I want to do is uh, knock these corners off. And so uh, the dimensions for those corners, uh, if we go back and look real quick, um, there's, a, there's a corner 20 millimeters down, actually two corners. And then there are corners here and here, and there are two corners here on this 92 dimension. Um, I need to create a plane through those three points that we have, but they don't lie on a single uh, planar surface. Uh, so we're going to do something we've not done before. We're going to do a 3D sketch. This will be the simplest way to get this done. Um, and a nice use, simple use for a 3D sketch. So uh, I'm, I'm in the sketch tab up here, and I'm going to click on the little drop down and start a 3D sketch. This is, I think, your only chance this semester to do a 3D sketch. And uh, we're going to grab the point tool and make sure that you've lit that, that edge up and drop a point on those two edges. And then we'll drop a point on this edge for the two corners. And then we'll drop a point down here. Make sure you do not hit the midpoint. And we'll drop a point there. And let's hit escape. Now, um, we need to dimension this. And again, it's a little different because it's a 3D sketch, so you do have to be careful. Um, rather than picking, say, points, I want to make sure I pick an edge and then pick that point to get that dimension in. That's 92 millimeters. And then uh, we'll pick this point. And we'll pick this edge to force it to the orientation we want. We'll make that 20. Then I'll pick this edge and this point. And that's going to be 41. And this point to this edge is going to be a 73. Now, these two points are not defined yet because they can, they can move. Um, however, I don't want to put another dimension in. That would be breaking our rules. Um, but in 3D, uh, we can't do a vertical or horizontal relation because in three dimensions, there isn't necessarily a vertical or horizontal. Um, so if you look at the triad down here, we call this the triad. Um, this tells us the directions of the X, Y, and Z axis. And of course, it's oriented to the model. So this is the X axis. Uh, in this case, height is Y and depth is Z. Um, so when I pick these two points, I'll hold the control key down to create a relation. Notice in a 3D sketch, we don't even get offered horizontal or vertical. What we get offered is along Z, along Y, or along, uh, along X, Y, or Z. 
Well, we want to relate these along the z-axis. So I'm going to come over here and uh, we'll say along z. And that locks that in place. And we'll pick these two. And once again, along z. And now um, those, those points are all black and, in fact, we're fully defined. So I'm going to close that 3D sketch. Now we're going to create a plane. Uh, so I'm going to go to Features, and we're going to create a plane uh, through these three points back here. One, two, three. And that creates the plane that's actually the exact cut, if you will. So we'll hit OK. And we'll Plane Tool again. And one, whoop, i got to clear this one out. Uh, two and three, and we'll hit OK. So the way this will work, and I don't want you to mirror these. Um, uh, SolidWorks may not want to mirror these uh, if you don't have both planes and both sketches. So I want you to do these as two separate cuts. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to sketch on plane two. Let's zoom up a bit, and I'm going to just connect the dots, those same points and this one's hiding and back to here now you'll do the same you'll sketch on this side I'm gonna close that sketch and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it this is a different uh, different end cut end finishing for the cut than we've used before I'm gonna do an extruded cut and we're gonna say up to vertex and I want you to lock it right to that point um, yes, through all would work, but I just want you to try this. So I expect to see that as your uh, end condition for that cut. Okay, and we'll hit OK. So do the same thing here. Sketch a line. Sketch the lines. Cut up to vertex. Okay. All right. I'm going to hide these planes. You can always bring them back if we need them. And uh, now that I'm done with the 3D sketch, I'm going to go ahead and hide that also. <clears throat> we'll get those points out of the way. All right, second thing I want to do real quick, uh, that radial cut, let's take a look real fast. There's a radial cut here. Notice that the center point, even though it's actually way down off the screen here, the center point is in line with this edge. Okay, so you don't need the radius value. 20 millimeters here, 230 here, and with that in line, that'll lock that in place. We can do this with a tangent arc real easy. So um, I'm going to sketch on this face and do a line and I'll just start over here somewhere to here zoom up on that I'm gonna come up a bit and then I'm coming out like I'm drawing a line I'm gonna go back and touch and do a tangent arc and just connect it to this point so now if I dimension this height at 20 and this length at 230 we're fully defined because this tangent arc is locked tangent at 90 degrees, if you will. And I can cut that through all. Oop. All right, so now back to the uh, S curve. I'll show you this sketch real quick, just so you can see it. So there's the sketch. So I drew a spline curve with one, two, three, four, five definition points because I've got five dimensions in there. And then uh, this point, this point, this point are vertical related, and these two points are vertical related. This is a thin feature, and if you kind of look at the picture, you can see it's kind of down the middle. So we're going to mid-plane this thin feature. Um, so a highlight sketch too, and we're going to extrude. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. We don't know what to extrude to yet. I need that angled surface at 5 degrees, and notice that it passes through the corner of the part right there. So I'm going to create a plane. I'm going to pick this top surface, and then I'm going to pick this corner. And we're going to switch it. Instead of perpendicular over here, we're going to click on angle and 5 degrees. And that gives us a tilted plane at 5 degrees, like so. All right, now we're ready. I'm going to take that sketch and we're going to extrude it. Um, 
It's a thin feature. We're going to go mid-plane. It's, it's uh, four millimeters thick. And we're going to go up to surface and pick the plane. The plane can act as a surface for us. And we'll hit OK. Now take a look here. And you can see that, um, let's go normal too. Um, you can see that the top of that extrude is at the angle. Okay, that's what we want to see. So don't do this as a cut after the fact. Um, besides, you'd have to do an underdefined sketch to do that. So we don't want to do that. All right, now uh, I want to cut the holes before I do the pattern. So I want to show you how to deal with that. Uh, I'm going to uh, click on Sketch 2 and I'm going to turn that sketch on. I'm going to show it. And let's go normal to uh, the top surface. There we go. And we can see that sketch now, and we can see the definition points. So if I sketch on the top surface of the part, I could draw a circle here and here. And I'll equal relate them. And we'll go ahead and put the diameter dimension in. It is 8 millimeters. And then I'm going to pick these two points and make them horizontal. And we'll take these horizontal. And then we'll take this point and this point and that point, And we'll make those all vertical. And that fully defines everything without any dimensions to locate. Okay, So it's tied to the same points. I'm not saying this is a good thing. If you were really dimensioning this part, you'd want to probably locate these holes. This is just an exercise. Um, now we can cut those through all. And then you would just do a linear pattern. You've done lots of those. The nice thing about this linear pattern would be, and I'm just going to pattern the comb here. Uh, when we do a linear pattern here, and uh, let's change our spacing here. There we go. And we'll have 10 of them. Uh, the preview looks like they're all the same height, but as soon as we hit OK, um, notice they follow that plane. Okay. Now, you would have included the holes in the pattern, and you'd have been good to go. All right, so there's that part. Let's say goodbye to that. OK, what's next? Um, this part, uh, nothing here I need to uh, demonstrate for you. I think you should be able to do all of this. So decide what your base feature is going to be and what plane it's going to be on. And build this, I just want to make note, the nose is stuck out here 15 millimeters. You're going to have to create a plane for that. The rib is back here. That's this rib. Um, you're going to have to create a plane to sketch that rib. And then uh, read the instructions carefully. And uh, it says that when you do the slot, you need to create a tangent plane to this cylinder uh, with no dimensions. Okay. Finally on this part, uh, something new for us, and we're going to use this this week. Um, you're asked to assign the material cast carbon steel. Um, and then record the mass on your hand in sheet. And I'm going to show you how to do that uh, with a different part. Um, but all of the assignments, uh, six or eight two through to the end, um, you're going to record the mass on your hand in sheet. Um, so let's take a look at how we establish the mass. Um, this one already has a material assigned. I'm going to remove it so you can see what it looks like normally. Normally, when you create a new part in SolidWorks here, um, material is not specified. So the way to assign material is just right click on it and edit material. And we're going to choose cast carbon steel. And you can see it has all the values for density, etc., in here. I'm going to apply and close. It's now cast carbon steel. And if I went up here to the evaluate tab, and clicked on Mass Properties, a pop up a dialog box for us. And uh, so it tells us uh, the density of the material. Here's the mass. That's the number you're going to record, 2922.73 grams. Here's the volume of the part in cubic millimeters, surface area in square millimeters. This is the center of mass or center of gravity. It's right there. If we could magically hook the part right there, no matter what orientation the part was in, it would not rotate. Um, and then uh, moments of inertia. 
uh, if you've had statics and strengths or if you're taking it, uh, you'll understand what those are. Um, so this will get recorded, the mass will get recorded on your sheet. All right, now I have this part up and I want to talk about it. So let's jump now to the next one. A couple things to make note of here. Uh, there are two slots uh, which you have to use the design library for, which is what I'm going to show you. Uh, but let's read on for just a minute. Um, all corners are filleted except the slots, holes, and the 90 millimeter cut. Um, make sure that the 8mm holes and the 90mm cut are separate features. So these two 8mm holes, do not extrude them with the outside curve. Do those as separate cuts. Likewise, this 90mm slot right here, you got to take that as a separate cut. Do not try to sketch that into your initial sketch. Then it, in bold face, underlined, I don't know how we could be more obvious, do the fillets last. It has to be the last thing you do. And if you're good, you'll get all the fillets in in a single step, one feature for the fillets. Um, but what I want to look at here are the slots. And you can see that there's a dimension to the center of the slot and to the center point of the slot. And they're both 65 millimeters down. And I've called out here locating edge 1 and locating edge 2. Okay. Um, so uh, when we do the library feature, um, it's going to ask us for locating edges. You're going to click on this edge first and then on this edge. Okay. All right, let's have a look at this and see how it works. Here's the part, and I've got everything done now except for the slots and then the fillets. Again, the holes are separate features, etc., etc. Um, so uh, the library feature is over here. It's the book, book library books over here. So I'm going to click on the library books, and this opens up the design library. I want to go to the design library and uh, I want to go to features. This is a metric part and I want to click on slots and I have three slots here. I have and I these are the ones I want. This is a fixed 10 millimeter slot, but I have a curved slot and a straight slot here available to me. I'm going to take this straight slot. I'm just going to click and drag and drop it on the top surface of the part. So click and drag, drop it on the top surface of the part. Now, as soon as I do that, a uh, dialog box opens up over here on the left, and it wants to know what slot I want. And so I have to pick the right slot, and we want a 10.2 uh, by 51. So let's scroll down here a little too far. 10.2 by 51. And now this pops up, and it says uh, it wants the locating edge. This is very confusing because this pops up right in your way. But over here, it's asking for locating edge 1. Uh, so I'm going to try to zoom away from this, or maybe I'll move this out of the way. Didn't need to do that. So locating edge 1 is here. That's what I told you. And then locating edge 2 up here. Now you can see the slot is certainly in the wrong place. And down here, here's the locating dimension. So this is the locating dimension off of edge 1, and that's supposed to be 50 millimeters. And then the locating dimension off edge 2 is 65. If you were to accidentally hit OK without correcting those, you can go in and edit this sketch to fix that location. We'll go ahead and hit OK. There's the straight slot feature, and uh, I'll show you. It has, uh, here's the sketch. This is the Sketch should have the locating dimensions, and you could go in and edit that if you want. Don't edit these numbers. In fact, I don't think you can. I think you have to edit the feature. All right, so now I want the curve slot. We'll come back to this. Here's the curve slot. It's not in the right orientation, but that will fix itself if we pick the locating edges in the proper order. Uh, this is a 10.2 by 30.6 by 90 degrees. Again, it wants locating edges. I'm going to pick this as edge 1, and this as edge 2. That should turn the slot for us. It's gone right off the part. Um, so let's change this dimension to 88. And we're getting an error here. I'm going to have to uh, just let this one go, and we'll fix this in the sketch. So we'll hit OK. And now I'm going to edit that sketch. 
and we'll double click that dimension and set it to 65. I don't know why that was blanked out there, but that'll get us in the right position. All right, and then you're going to fill it, and I'm going to fill it this thing real quick because I want you to see everything that's filleted. Truly, all the corners are filleted except corners that have holes in them and this back slot. So uh, we'll pick that edge. Ooh, I've, let's pick the, fix the radius here to three millimeters. There we go. We'll pick that edge. We'll pick that edge. Um, okay. Common mistake to leave that one out. Make sure you get it under there. Uh, we'll pick that edge and that one. Uh, let's get this one. We'll take that one and that one and that one and that one and I think all I've left are these little corners right here so make sure you're getting all these corners in your fillet let's wing this around see what's happening we hit okay and there's all our fillets this is an old part uh, very old release of SolidWorks and so it the fillets come in in a different color if you missed a corner, instead of doing a second fillet, go back and edit this one and pick that missing corner. Don't, don't do a separate fillet. That way, if we need to change the radius or something, we can do it all in a single step. All right, so that's uh, this part. Let's say goodbye to that. All right, next up, uh, this part, uh, not too difficult, but uh, I've made it difficult in terms of how we dimension it. Um, so I want you to be very careful with this one. Um, you should be able to create this shape uh, without too much difficulty. Uh, there's a cylinder and a, a slot shaped extrude. There's a land in between um, that's 16 millimeters thick. Uh, then you can cut this slot. Uh, I would not cut the hole yet. You want to do that kind of last. It's this ear that we have to deal with here, and this is where it gets tricky. Um, this is a top view. This is the front view here. So the top plane should be slicing right through the part right here. That's the top plane right there. Okay. And if we look at this detail, so imagine the top plane slicing through the part here. This top surface is 9 millimeters up. I'm sorry, is 10 millimeters up from the middle of the part and then it's 20 millimeters down. So this extrude, um, you cannot mid-plane it because uh, you eliminate the 9 millimeter or 10 millimeter dimension. Okay, um, So you're going to have to create a plane up here to create this feature and extrude it down 20. Um, and then you can create the slit here uh, before or after the hole. I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, but you do want to create this feature before you cut the holes. So uh, stay in that habit of all, always getting all the solids first and then cutting all the holes, slots, etc. a second. Um, that will keep you out of trouble, uh, keep you from having to do something uh, that you don't need, need or want to do. Um, so let's take a look at the part. Here it is. And again, here's my top plane. It's slicing right through the part. So I need a parallel plane up 10 millimeters. I, I'm going to show you a shortcut instead of going to the plane tool here. Um, I'm going to click on the top plane. If you hold the control key down and you click on that plane and drag it up, it'll automatically create a parallel plane for you and you can just set the dimension. You don't even have to go to the plane tool. Um, so there's a little shortcut for you when you need parallel planes. Uh, you can just click and drag. Remember that dimension goes into the model. So don't do this just for the fun of it. Um, all right, so we're going to sketch on that plane, and I'm going to go normal two, and and I'm going to uh, sketch that shape, and I'm going to turn on temporary axes. This is the only way to make this happen um, without uh, adding some dimensions or being underdefined, because I'm actually going to draw it right to the temporary axis. And then I can dimension this.
and 32 from the axis to the arc here. All right, now I'm fully defined. I'm going to go back to isometric. You can see that it's up on that upper surface, and then I can extrude that in the opposite direction, uh, 20 millimeters. And that gets that feature there, okay? Now I could cut the hole, cut the hole, and then cut the slit uh, through there, okay? So uh, you can punch the hole now, then you should be able to create this sketch right here. Make sure you get the 9 and the 2 millimeter dimension in there um, for that sketch. Cut that through all, add the hole, um, good to go. Again, there's a material requirement. Uh, and you have to put the mass on the hand and sheet. Um, then the last two assignments are hooked together, if you will. Um, you're going to create this model. Nothing new or unique here to speak of. Be very careful about how you create this cylinder, especially. Um, use only the dimensions given. There are a couple different ways you can approach it, but uh, be very, very careful not to add any dimensional information. Um, by the way, when you draw your base feature, which is probably this sketch, you've got to put this in at that time, this rounded end. Do not try to do a square end here and then add this as a second thing. It, it doesn't work. You can't get it defined right. Um, this is all one feature. That's a tangent line there. It does not come to that intersection right there. So create this part and then set your material, record it, save it. The second half of this assignment, 8-6, is to, if you will, take that part and we're going to machine away all the surfaces. This is commonly done in industry. Um, and so we have the cast part, even though there were no draft angles, we have the cast part and then we have the machine part. But we do this in a very unique way and I want you to see how. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to start a uh, new part. This is a metric part. I want to make sure of that. Yep. So I'm in an empty part. Do not open the other one and just start whittling away. I'm in a new part and I'm going to go insert part. And I'm going to grab uh, 47 here. That's the old number. And we'll hit open. And you got to drop it on the origin, so make sure you touch the origin with your mouse. It should kind of stick, and we'll drop it right there. Okay, so that's how you have to start this one. When I look at your feature manager, the first item should be SW. Uh, yours will say 8-5 here. Um, so you're bringing in this part. Now I can't edit this part. Just like if I handed you the casting and told you to machine it, you can't edit the casting. So in the casting or in the machined part file, you don't have the capacity to edit the casting. That's how we want it. However, if you changed, if you went back into SW8-5 uh, and you made a change, when you reopen the casting, that change would show up. Okay, um, so they are linked. And I'd just like to whittle a couple things away here just to show you. So uh, let's click on this surface and start a sketch, and we'll go normal too. And uh, the first cut we're going to do is there's a machine surface right here. And I need to do that first because then it's, it's measured off of that machine face to get this notch in. Um, there's a bunch of holes that are cut in here. I do want you to note that I have a 19 millimeter dimension for this hole. When you look at this hole, it's in line with that one. So don't put another 19 millimeter dimension in. You have to use a relation uh, to locate this particular hole. And don't do them backwards. This one should not have a height dimension here. Uh, that distance is defined in the right side view um, for both those holes. Also, the top and the bottom of this cylinder are machined off. So don't forget that. Common mistake to miss that. All right, so I'm going to just draw a rectangle. Um, still, same rules apply. You've got to be fully defined and all that. So I've drawn a rectangle and I attached it to these two edges and I'm going to dimension it now. Um, let me bring my copy up here. It is uh, 10 millimeters from here to here. 
and it's 43 tall. And we're going to just cut that through all. Like so. Okay. So uh, you'll whittle away surfaces and punch some holes and things. There are a couple ways you can approach the, uh, the cylinder here. Um, and I'll uh, leave that up to your imagination, but uh, make sure that you get the proper two dimensions in here, the 3 and the 22. There are no other dimensions there, so don't add any dimensional information other than the 3 millimeter height and the 22 millimeter height. But there are a couple different ways you can do that, um, and I'll let you ponder that. Uh, so there you have it, uh, week 8. Uh, good luck, and as always, enjoy.